Okay, so this is part two of the chapter uh, four notes. Um, we just finished talking about the octet rule, and the octet rule says the atoms want zero or eight valence electrons, and they will gain or lose electrons so they can get zero or eight. And the exception there is a duet rule for helium and hydrogen. Um, those two want zero or two. That's why I call it duet rule versus the octet rule. Um, now, this tendency to gain or lose electrons forms a pattern on the periodic table. And if you look at your periodic table that you got from me as a handout, you'll see that I wrote this pattern along the top of it. Um, it doesn't look quite as fancy as this, but I hand wrote in the charges above the columns along the periodic table. Now, I just want to talk about this real quick. Um, if we look at the electron configurations of, let's see, let's look at row number two on the periodic table. So lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, neon. If we look at those electron configurations, uh, the first one is Li, and that gets one dot. Like I said before, octet rule says... It wants zero or eight. Well, which is it closer to? Lithium is closer to zero, so it's going to lose that one electron. When it loses that electron, it has an extra positive now. It becomes a positive one charge, or a one plus charge. Uh, the next element in row two, or period two, is beryllium. Beryllium has two dots. Well, again, it's zero or eight. Those are the options it's going for. And it's closer to zero, so it's going to lose two electrons. So beryllium would have a charge of two plus. Uh, the next one, boron. Boron has three. And boron, since it's closer to zero, it's going to lose those three and become a positive three charge. Now it gets a little tricky with carbon because it has four. Well, which one is it closer to? Um, basically, being carbon and being a non-metal, remember on the right side of that zigzag line, non-metals like do um, gain electrons. Um, metals like to lose electrons. So you can see all the positives are over here. The metals like to form positives. Non-metals like to form uh, negatives. So in this case, um, carbon since it's a non-metal, would gain four electrons to be happy. It's a little easier to see with nitrogen. Nitrogen has five. Closer to eight, so it's going to gain three here. Did I just misspeak? I don't know. Carbon wants to gain four. Nitrogen is going to gain three more because it has a total of five, and it wants three more so it can have eight. If we look at the next one, which is oxygen, oxygen has six dots, so it's going to gain two more. Fluorine has seven dots. It only needs to gain one more to be happy. And then neon, well, neon is already happy. It doesn't need to gain any or lose any because it has eight, and it is happy just the way it is. So that kind of should hopefully help explain this pattern of the charges on the periodic table. Metals want to lose electrons because they have less than four. Nonmetals, in the most part, um, want to gain electrons because they have um, more than four. So they're closer to eight. So moving on, there are trends on the periodic table that we need to talk about, and I'm not going to write out a, uh, write out these every time on worksheets and tests and notes and stuff. I E stands for ionization energy, E N stands for electronegativity, A R stands for atomic radius, and the definitions of these terms are here. You will want to know these patterns. 
So if I look at ionization energy or electronegativity, ionization energy is the energy needed to remove an electron. Electronegativity is how much an atom attracts an electron. You can kind of see how those would be related. If it attracts an electron a lot, it would very strongly, so high electronegativity, it's going to take a lot of energy to remove it. So you can see how those two are kind of related. Now, these two things decrease as you go down a group. And what I mean by that is as you go from hydrogen to lithium to sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, francium, as you go from the top of the group to the bottom of the group, these two things decrease. Now, the reason is if I draw lithium, draw a picture of the atom, it has two rings. And on that outer ring, it has one electron. Now, if I also draw francium, if I even have room here, it is in the seventh row, so it's going to have seven rings. One, two, three, four, five, six, pretty sloppy, seven. So francium has seven rings, and on that outer ring, it has its one electron. Well, if you notice, lithium's electron is very close to the positive nucleus, so it's holding on to that electron very strongly. Here with francium, that electron's way out here in the seventh ring, really far from the positive nucleus. Plus, in between the positive nucleus and this electron, there's all these other electrons kind of getting in the way, interfering with the attraction between the positive protons in the nucleus and the negative electron. So that's something called we call, we call uh, electron shielding. The positive in the center in the nucleus is getting shielded by all these other electrons in between the outer electron and the nucleus. Now, both of these things, ionization energy and electronegativity, increase as you go from left to right. And if I show you that, again, I'll draw lithium. Two rings and electron on that outer ring. Now, if I draw, let's see here. If I draw fluorine, well, it's got the same number of rings, and it's got a positive and a positive negative, but it's got all these other negatives here. So one, two, three, four, six. Seven. It's got these seven electrons. So we have seven outer electrons, two inner electrons, so that's a total of nine. Nine protons, also nine electrons. Well, lithium only has three protons and three electrons. And if you think of it, well, three positives and three negatives, that attraction, there's attraction there between positive and negative, but the attraction is going to be even greater with nine protons and nine electrons. So the more opposite charges you have, the, the stronger the attraction is. So fluorine, with its nine electrons and nine protons, nine opposite charges, that attraction is stronger than just like lithium, three protons, three electrons. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, the next trend we're going to talk about real quick is atomic radius. And atomic radius is basically just the size of the atom. Now the first one increases as you go down a group. 
again, as I go from heal, um, hydrogen to lithium to sodium, potassium, rubidium. So let's look at the difference between lithium and cesium. And this should be kind of obvious. Lithium, second row, has two rings. Um, cesium, in the second to last row, I believe, yep, one, two, three, four, five, six, sixth row. So it's going to have six rings. Obviously, since it has more rings, it's going to be bigger. One, two, three, four, five, six. Those are some really sloppy atoms. Um, so six rings, so it's obviously going to be a bigger atom. Now, if I go across a period, across a row from left to right, let's say I'm going from lithium to francium, uh, not francium, uh, fluorine again, so lithium to fluorine. If I draw those pictures again, lithium has two rings, just like I said before. And in that atom, there are three protons and three electrons. Those three electrons, there's two of them on this ring, and then there's one of them on the outer ring. But if I draw fluorine, I have these rings Oh, I messed up. Let's stop here for a second. I'm gonna... So I messed that up. Lithium, two rings, three protons, three electrons. Fluorine, since it's in the same row, also has two rings. But here, this time, what happens is, and I didn't draw this very good, is we have nine protons and nine electrons. And since we have more opposite charges, what happens is, since there's more opposite charges, it pulls those rings in closer. Since there's nine positive protons, what it does is, it pr pulls those rings in closer to the nucleus. So lithium, since it only has three positives here, pulling that cloud in, pulling on those rings, it doesn't pull those rings in as tight. So this, again, is kind of a bad drawing here. Um, fluorine, since it has more positives, is going to pull those rings in closer, making the atom more compact. So the key to understanding these trends here, as you go down a group, so from top to bottom, you're adding another ring. As you go across a period, a horizontal row, from left to right, you're adding more and more opposite charges to the same energy level. So you're not adding an energy level as you go across. You're adding more opposite charges. If you can remember those two things, you can kind of explain all of these trends, atomic radius, electronegativity, and ionization energy. And again, I think this is going to be a good time to stop, and I will do a third part of this video.